Hello, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to take a look at these laptops. There's a bit of a story behind these. Um, as some of you might know, about a year ago, we moved into our first house, me and my girlfriend. And, uh, well, most of the stuff that we had before has made it uh, to this place. All of my stuff certainly has. We're not 100% sure that all of her stuff is here as well. <clears throat> but that's a different story for a different day. So... These are three computers that came from her place, and uh, these haven't been powered on in forever. So we're going to take a look at them today, see if they work and what they are, so we can uh, get to know these machines as well. And there's also a little special machine that is not on camera at the moment that we'll take a look at at the end, where I'm going to need some help from you guys. So definitely stay tuned for that. For now, let's get into the first of these laptops. The first machine we see right here is this Acer. This is an Acer switch. It's a 10 inch convertible. This was made in 2015. It's an Intel Atom and uh, overall pretty nice little machine. We have a, let's just get the tablet part off first. Here is the tablet part. It has, to, uh, has a docking connector on the bottom. This is a Windows key. This is the power button, and I think this is a volume rocker. This is the three and a half inch or three and a half millimeter audio jack. Almost dropped it, line of stick tip style. Microphone is right here. Micro SD card slots right here. This is a um, micro USB port. We have a micro HDMI here as well, and the power input. And the rest of this thing is a well, it's a ten inch tablet. I believe the resolution on this is 1280 by 800. We'll take a look at that in a bit. Now, what makes these things interesting is that this is the dock part of the convertible laptop. And uh, Acer, in their infinite wisdom, decided that uh, these could be equipped with hard drives. I believe this model does have the hard drive. You just have to take all, out all of the screws. And obviously, it gives you a keyboard and a trackpad, which is pretty terrible. Keyboard is okay for what it is. It's pretty much netbook quality. And it also gives you just one USB 2 type A port. Right. Let's snap that in place. Feels very high quality, obviously, as you would expect. And the power adapter wants to go away. I disagree. And let's see. If anything at all happens. Huh. I heard something like a hard drive spin up and then it turned off. There it is, there it goes. All right, it is running Windows 10 in fact. I think this is a pretty ancient version though. <laughs> we'll have to see. Let's type in Winver. This is Windows 10 1803. So this is not one of those Clover Trail atoms. I don't think it's one of those because they couldn't run beyond 1607 due to some driver incompatibility. In terms of CPU, we have the, let's see, can we zoom in at all? No, we cannot. We can obviously scroll like that with one finger. We have an Atom CPU, it's a Z3735F, 1.33 gigahertz. It's a 32-bit operating system that's installed on here because it only has two gigs of RAM. Let's see here. It's not very fast. I'm just trying to pull up task manager here. There we go. It's not connected to the internet and even then it's running 40% CPU. So we have 1.2 gigs of RAM in use out of the two that we have. So the main SSD in here is a Hynix SSD. It's a 32 gigabyte eMMC SSD. 
and we also have a USB device, which is in fact the hard drive in the dock, and that is a 500 gigabyte Western Digital drive. So yeah, 500 gig drive, 32 gigabyte for the boot. It's not great. So yeah, let's see what happens if we, well, we should probably eject the dock before we just pull it off. I don't think the hard drive will really think it's that good of an idea to uh, yank the dock off. There we go. And now we have the dock in hand. Again, these were shipped in Windows 8, and 8 really makes a lot of sense on a machine like this. Uh, with Windows 10, they really went the way of, you know, regular desktop computers and laptops again, not so much for convertibles. So it's not 100% touch friendly. And as you can see, I'm just tapping in, it's not doing anything, it just wants to connect to the internet. Um, the big tile interface of Windows 8 definitely made a lot more sense. This probably is going to be downgraded to Windows 8 at one point. Yeah, whatever. Uh, right. Again, this is, like I said, a 1280 by 800 screen. And I guess this is just your average machine for doing some web browsing, some light word processing, stuff like that. Or if you want to use it in tablet mode, you can watch some movies on here. That'll do just fine for that. And one thing I wanted to know is whether this processor is a dual core or a quad core. We'll find out here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it says right there. You can definitely tell. Four cores, four threads, 1.33 gigahertz. So it is a quad core. All right, let's take a look at this uh, green abomination. It's a Scenic Mobile 501 made by Siemens. This is not a Siemens Nixdorf. It's not a Fujitsu Siemens. This is just a regular old Siemens. As you can tell on the bottom. It also has a key for Windows 2000, so that pretty much tells you what kind of uh, machine this was. This is a business-grade notebook from around that time frame. It has a Pentium 2 CPU, it has some RAM. Honestly, I'm not very familiar with these machines and this one is not in the greatest working condition. As you can tell, we're missing the hard drive uh, caddy caddy here and the uh, little door. We do have hard drive in there, that's for sure. So, you know, let's just start with the outside tour and then we'll get to the interesting parts because this is a very interesting concept that Siemens had back in the day. So on the left hand side, this is probably usually a push button of some sort. Again, I'm not particular, particularly familiar with these notebooks. Here's the hard drive bay. We have two PCM CIA slots. On the back we have infrared, USB, parallel docking connector, serial and VGA. That VGA port might be very necessary. We'll find that out shortly. The display on in this particular one is pretty rough. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it will not work at all. We have keyboard, mouse port, PS2 here, power input here, regular old barrel jack, great. We'll get to that later, why that's great. Microphone, line in, and headphone jack right there. Here you'll also find another one of those push buttons that is used to unlock the modules. The design of these notebooks is to be very, very modular. You can have a battery, a CD-ROM drive, a floppy and a CD-ROM drive, not have a battery at all and just have the power input uh, stowed away in there. There's all kinds of options you have. Let me get some of the modules out. We have a couple for this one. Here is an extra battery. Another one. And a floppy drive. And yes, it is indeed very, very dusty. It's been in a box for uh, years. And there's also a way, like I said, to put the power adapter directly into the notebook. So in, this is basically a weight saver of sorts. It has an external power input over here so you can put the cable in. And uh, that works pretty well. You can just put this in and uh, you're basically golden. Makes a lot of it a lot easier to carry. You can just put these in your bag, for instance. 
So uh, yeah, very, very modular indeed. Let's actually show that off here in practice. That would be fun, I would assume. Let me just reorganize this a little bit and uh, we'll show the magic. All right, here we go. So I just push the button. And if you're lucky, it'll unlatch. There we go. It's a bit rough after all these years. And now we have the CD-ROM drive out. We can put that aside. Put in the floppy drive like so. It was upside down, obviously. And now we have a floppy drive. We can even go dual spindle mode. Pull out the battery. Yes, this thing has three bloody batteries. <laughs> All right. And then we can put the... Am I putting it upside down again? Well, I guess that bay is only a battery bay. Shows you how much I know about these. It's all a learning experience. That's what we're here for, aren't we? Yes, it would seem that that bay is for batteries only. Or I'm just doing it wrong. Nope, definitely is battery only. So it will not do dual spindles. Okay. I assumed it did, but it doesn't. But we can put in this, which is the power unit. Although I'm not 100% sure how they had that in mind. I mean, other than going out of the left-hand side. Is that also where the power jack is? No, it is not. All right then. That'll be interesting to see then. There's no way to fish this through, so. I assumed it would have been pretty easy to get this to work then, but. I mean, on the left-hand side, where that empty space was, where I assumed it was a push button, but it was actually next to the push button, it perfectly lines up with this. But you can't really put this cable anywhere. So that's interesting. Because there's no real space inside of here to fish the cable through. I mean, I can fish it out here, but I can't get it outside of the laptop anyway. So I guess we'll just use this externally. But again, we have three batteries we can use. That's always pretty nice. So we'll put in a battery right there. There we go. Give it another push. Push in another battery on this side of the laptop so we can have dual batteries. And now we have dual batteries. Let me describe the keyboard on this. It's actually fairly good. It needs a cleaning, but again, this laptop does have its problems, so if we, if we do end up cleaning it up, it'll be more to be a display piece or like uh, a half top, maybe detach the screen and go as a half top and connect a VGA monitor to it. If the rest of the hardware works fine, I'm not gonna junk it at least. Buttons feel good. Trackpad is tiny, but feels good overall. So that is very nice. I guess we'll power it up now because this video is getting on a bit and we still have one laptop and something special to come here. So uh, let's hook it up to power and uh, see if it wants to fire up or not. We have the power turned on. Just wanted to zoom in on that area right there. You can see it has battery left and right over there. It's definitely detecting them. I don't think they're charging. They're probably stone dead after all these years. Well. Can't blame it, right? This thing is over 20 years old at this point. So yeah, let's turn it on and see if the display wants to work today or whether we have to get an external monitor to showcase the machine. Hard disk roars into life. And that's pretty much all it does. There is sometimes a way to just push at a certain spot. Apparently it's this spot here. If you don't hold it, it immediately fades back. So I'll just hold it here for a little bit. We have a Pentium 2, 333 megahertz, 128 megs of RAM, 
Obviously, everything is bad. <laughs> Power management feature is not installed or not available on the installed CPU type. Checksum invalid. Um, let's save and exit. Bios data, this is 1996. That would not be accurate for the hardware that's in it or the Windows 2000 key on the bottom. But who knows? It has a little load indicator. <laughs> Let's see if it gets through the power on self test and starts to load some kind of operating system. I am completely unaware of what's installed on this. So far, so good. With our nice little Pentium 2. BIOS date is the 29th of June, 1999. So I guess this laptop is from 1999 or 1998. Operating system is not found. We either have a web drive or a busted one. All right, I guess uh, that concludes the Siemens Scenic Mobile 501. I'll put it aside now. And next we'll take a look at the last notebook combination that we need to look at here, which is a Compaq Evo notebook. Is it successor to uh, the Armada E500 that I have? Let's take a close look at it. And here we have the beast side by side. This is a Compaq Armada E500. This is a Compaq Evo N600C. So yeah, they're both Pentium 3 laptops. They're both from around the year 2000, 2001. And uh, you can definitely see that the Evo was a big evolution in the name over the previous Armada series and I'll definitely give the window a close because the police finds it necessary to use their siren at this time of day well who can blame them <laughs> living in a big city nowadays and not no longer on a rural little town so yeah again this is a big evolution over the Armada series that uh, preceded it this is a sub notebook class that's also why it's very, very thin and it needs a docking station like this to get uh, the best out of it. It does have a Pentium 3 mobile, just like the Armada E500 over there. But it is definitely a very lot smaller. Right, let's get the Armada off the table here. It is a heavy brick. It is a very nice laptop though. It has all the ports and connections that you would want. It is ideal for dealing with older desktop computers, for instance, because it does have dual spindles. And that makes it extremely versatile. Right, let's move a little bit back closer, so I can also see what I'm doing. During video making, that is definitely very handy to have. Let's see how this docking station works. It's probably just a matter of pushing the button. Taking it off, and it is. We'll take a look at that shortly. So here's what you get with the notebook itself. It is very, very light, and it is also very, very thin by the standards of this time. It does, however, have full-size ports. For instance, it does have an Ethernet port. It has a modem. It has a PCMCIA, USB and infrared over here, some jacks, power slider, we have on the back a parallel and a serial port, composite out. It has these little things. These are probably for the docking station, I would assume. No idea, not really all that important. We have a full-size VGA port, power input, another USB port. And that is pretty much it. Serial on here is Windows 98 second edition. If we open up the notebook, again, this is, oh, it's an N400C, excuse me. It's not a 600, it's a 400, so it's the slightly more compact model. I think the 600C was a bit bigger than this. This also has, I think, a 14-inch screen, and I think the 600 has a 15-inch. Don't quote me on that. I'm a bit rusty on my old compacts at the moment. We don't have a trackpad on this because it is a very compact little notebook. We do have a little nub here for moving the mouse around. Another power button over here. Some quick access buttons over here that you can map through compact software. You need to install that in order for those buttons to work at all. 
Matching 3 sticker. Here would have been the Windows 98 sticker. Probably the designed for Windows 98 or 2000 sticker, I would assume. And uh, it's definitely a very nice little machine that we're going to get acquainted with today. And all, that's all it really takes to dock it as well. So that's nice. Again, like we saw, it does not have a floppy drive. It does not have a CD-ROM drive. There just isn't any space for that. We do have it on the dock though. CD-ROM here, floppy drive over here. These are modular, so these will come out. It does appear to be the same CD-ROM drive as on the Armada. We'll have to see and pull it out, but it does appear very similar. These are also used by the Compaq Legacy PCs, the iPacs of the day. Just pulling out the drive on the Armada here, bear with me. So we can compare them side by side. Okay, so here we have them side by side. They have the same overall layout. I would definitely say that these are the same. Yep, they both have the same Compact Computer Corporation. They're both Type N533. The one on my Armada was made in January 2002. The one on the docking for the N400 was made on in November 2001. So it would appear that the Armada is slightly newer. See, they're both DRV CD-ROM, 24 times CD-ROM drives. Alrighty then. So yeah, didn't know that. These were actually the same drives. It does make sense because for Compaq it would be much cheaper to just carry like one type of CD-ROM drives for their business notebooks and docking stations as well. Floppy drive is a different model than that is on the Armadas. I can already eyeball that it's very, very different indeed. But that's not a big deal at all. Let's see if we want to power it on. Well, I just realized I forgot to show all the ports on the docking, as we can see here. An external connector here, parallel serial VGA USB PS2. On the side, some more audio jacks, the release button and the Kensington lock. On the front, we already saw what was over there. So if you want to power on a notebook that is docked, you power it through the dock and not through the notebook, power barrel jack, whatever thingy itself. And now we press the power button and it should power on. Hard drive is a bit rattly. This machine also has some slight display problems. It's mostly, I think, in the middle of the display. There's a huge... Yikes. There's like a... Uh, a pressure patch or whatever. It just looks that something very heavy has laid on it for a long time. And uh, I think we just saw a splash screen for Windows Millennium on there. It's a bit sacrilege, but you know... Again, I, I'm, I'm not that opposed to Windows Millennium, I'll say that much. It's pretty good overall if you have all the proper drivers. But yeah, here you can see the staining issue that I uh, told you about. It's over there, it's over there, it's over there, over there. That, that's the only real issue that this thing has. Other than that, it's pretty much perfect. Alright, let's move the tracking nub. It's an English version of Windows Millennium. So I guess this was reinstalled for other reasons. It appears to be charging the battery. Zero percent remaining, it's probably dead. I just want to open up CPU-Z, come on. It does not register mouse clicks at all. Nope. Huh. Well, that's a shame. All right, got a USB. Optical mouse here by Fujitsu, works just fine. Now I can at least click on things. 
It's much faster. Very high DPI, it would seem. Nice. Feels good in the hand, too. Not a bad mouse. So what we have here is a Pentium 3E. I'll zoom in on all of the magic. Something like that. Ends up Pentium 3E, copper mine, 850 megahertz. Not too shabby, 256k cache. AGP 1.02x, all right. 120 megs of RAM. It cannot report any of the slots. ATI Rage Mobility AGP graphics. Let's see what kind of memory that has. The display is, it goes up to 1600, I'm pretty sure it's just the XGA display. Yep, it's 1024 by 768. It's a Mach 64 class, Rich Mobility C, whatever. Doesn't actually show how much memory it has. I would probably assume like four, eight, or at best 16 megabytes. I would assume four or eight. Hard drive is a 20 gigabytes. It's a fast machine though. Definitely responds very, very well in Windows ME, which is not something you say every day. Uh, let's see, I want to look at the hard drive specification. Hard disk controllers, that's not what I'm looking for. Disk drives, right, it's all the way here. Generic IDE disk, right. <laughs> that's useful, I should name it DMA. Doesn't show what it is, but you know, it's 20 gig. Works well, system's pretty quick. And I guess that uh, really sums up the Compact Evo N400C that I mislabeled it N600C because I'm very familiar with its uh, successor. That's always nice to see. The, uh, what's it called? The uh, N610C. That's a Pentium 4M. Um, now let's move on to the PS de Resistance. All right, here it is, the PS de Resistance, like I said. It is an SCOM Greymate 486 notebook. That's what it says on the bottom. If you take a look at that here, here we can see SCOM Advanced Computer Technology Model Number Greymate 486 notebook with that kind of input rating. That's where your help comes in. Because if we take a look at this, this is the power input jack. It is sort of a DIN style connector. It looks like a PS2 connector, but with some extra pins. I cannot find a charger for this for the life of me. This model or this notebook is all is basically a rebranded MyTech 4020, like 4020C, F or G. They all use the same power connector. It's made by Aztec. I have found one on eBay, but it's in Italy, and the guy does not ship internationally or doesn't have any contact options, so I cannot get a hold of one. If you can help me out, if you have a compatible power adapter for this, let me know. I will be uh, willing to pay whatever you want for it and the uh, shipping. Keep it nice, by the way, I'm not going to pay like top dollar just for a charger. I'll just make it a display piece if it's, if it's uh, getting too much because I don't even know if this works. But I definitely need some help finding a charger for this. So if you can uh, hit me up if you have one that is compatible with this, I'll put some pictures on, uh, on the display right now so you can see uh, what I'm, I'm looking for. And also uh, the model number there. That would be appreciated very much. So let's take just a tour around the machine. We can only take a look at uh, what it looks like. We obviously can't power it on. You have an expansion bus here. You can whip this connector out uh, like so. And you can put a padlock through there and connect it to something so you can't steal it. PS2 combo port for mouse or keyboard. It can work for either. And on this side, we have parallel and serial. The doors are still in perfect working condition. The machine is barely yellowed at all. It was very, very dirty when I got it. PGA on here, nothing behind here. So it definitely cleaned up very nicely. And that showed that there's only a couple of areas where there is some slight yellowing, like here on the front. Um, 
on the display latches here but not on the top here this is all in perfect gray condition i guess it helps that it is gray and not actually beige it does appear beige but it's it's a very light gray and overall very nice little display there it's likely a monochrome display that would be typical for a notebook of this vintage I, I date this around 1992 somewhere around there 1993 maybe maybe even older I'm not sure keyboard is pretty good it's very loud as you can tell there's a good feel on it though it's not it's not definitely not terrible we have the uh, pointer, whatever here. We have a trackball instead of a tracking nub. Buttons here. Here we have brightness and contrast control for the display. The contrast control is definitely always a sign that we have a monochrome display because you definitely need to adjust that sometimes to get a good picture out of it. Don't know if the display works either. We can use an external monitor if we ever need to, if you can get it powered on. Here's also a sign that is, is actually a MyTech notebook. I'm assuming that there was something wrong with this little plastic part here. And it was replaced at some point in the life of this notebook because I've seen these notebooks uh, before, like some screenshots or photos or whatever online. And it did have an ESCOM branding on here originally. Maybe ESCOM ran out of parts. I'm not sure. They just ordered parts directly from MyTech and didn't bother rebranding it. So yeah, on this side here, we have Intel inside. It says genuine Intel 32-bit microprocessor inside. Just saying 32-bit like that basically means that it's a 386 class machine that was probably at some point in its design upgraded to a 486. It was not that uncommon to move a 386 design over to a 486 SX or even a very early DX, maybe a 33 megahertz. It did happen, so I guess that's what this is. Again, not 100% sure, there's not a lot of documentation on these machines, nor can I find a lot on the uh, MyTech Cousin. But uh, it's definitely a very nice little thing. It even comes with a floppy drive. Very, very nice. This is where the hard drive is located. Again, I'm assuming it works. This machine supposedly works if I if the previous owner is, is is to be believed. So yeah, I guess we won't find out until we can find a compatible charger for it. If you have one, if you can get a hold of one, definitely hit me up. Email address is in the outro. You can always find it there. And uh, I'd be very curious to see if someone can uh, hook me up with one. We'll definitely uh, take a more in-depth look at this laptop if we can get it working at all. That concludes this video. It's been going on for a bit. I hope you all enjoyed it anyway. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.